the poll numbers are out, President Obama's on the attack, and all of a sudden, Congressman Paul Ryan finds himself in a world of trouble. Speaking on his West Coast trip, Obama was not missing words. He slammed Ryan's plan as short-sighted and worse. There's been a proposal. It passed through Congress that would essentially make Medicare a voucher system. The Republican budget that was put forward, I would say, is fairly radical. I wouldn't call it particularly courageous. It's no mystery why the president feels emboldened and why the political ground is rapidly shifting under Ryan's feet. Simply put, his plan is massively unpopular. A Washington Post poll shows that almost 80% of Americans oppose cuts to Medicare in the name of reducing the deficit. And 72% of Americans want to raise taxes on the rich. Even 54% of Republicans find it acceptable. And if that wasn't enough, Ryan got another heaping dose of disapproval from his own constituents this week when they booed him for resisting raising, raising taxes on the rich. Of course, the reality is that they want to lower taxes on the highest bracket from 35 to 25 percent. That's why he got booed. It was obvious misdirection when he said, oh, I want to tax the top. Nonsense. And everybody knows it. And that's why he's backpedaling, saying, oh, I, me, me, oh, of course, no, I want to raise the, all of a sudden, right? Before he was all about, let's cut taxes for the rich, job creators. But he's backpedaling. And it's not just him who smells trouble. Even Michelle Bachman, queen bee of the Tea Party, is now dissing herself from those Bush era tax extensions, and she's trying to pin the blame on Obama. Watch. President Obama was the one who was behind the ex tax cut extension bill in December. That was his position. And I would agree with senior citizens. We're very concerned. Are you kidding me? You see, this is what Democrats get for agreeing with the Republicans. You should never make that mistake. Now, Bachman is saying it wasn't their idea, but it was President Obama's idea to lower taxes on the rich. But the fact that she's trying to run away from that issue speaks volumes. And today, more backpedaling from Ryan. He told the New York Times, quote, I'm trying not to get into some partisan bickering war with the president. I don't see what the purpose it serves to do that. Wait, wait, wait. You don't want to get into partisan bickering? Remember at the beginning of this month, when Ryan unveiled his so-called path of prosperity, these were the very first words in his summary, quote, where the president has failed, House Republicans will lead. How's that for turning this into a partisan fight? Except now that you realize that you're losing that fight, all of a sudden this is Ryan. Oh, come on, let's take it easy. No need to fight. Can't we all get along? Plus, please, please stop beating me up over my outrageously unpopular plan. Yeah, pretty convenient. With me now is Ron Brownstein, editorial director of the National Journal Group and Democratic pollster, Celinda Lake from the Lake Research Partners. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. Good to have you. Thanks for having us. All right, great. Celinda, let me start with you. Bad numbers, right? <laughs> Are there <laughs> even worse numbers for the Republicans? I mean, how bad can it get? Uh, these are some of the best numbers I've seen in a long time. And uh, we have not just numbers, but we have video, we have votes, and we have the president on the bully pulpit. So this is one of the first good weeks for Democrats in a long time. All right, Ron, it's not just uh, Ryan. Uh, we had another congressman, Congressman uh, Barletta, getting challenged as well. Let, let me show you a video of that and come back and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing with this uh, Ryan budget Look, she says, you didn't say anything about this in the campaign. All of a sudden, you, we elect you guys. You talked about jobs, and boom, all of a sudden, you're saying we're, we're basically going to get rid of Medicare. Uh, have the Republicans no, it's, it's, massively it's, miscalculated here? It, it's a big challenge for them, in particular, because the same bill that converts Medicare into a voucher or premium support system also embodies a continuation of the Bush tax cuts and, as you suggest, a tax reform that would lower top tax rates. And that puts Republicans in the same risk that they faced in 1995 when Bill Clinton argued that they were unraveling Medicare specifically to fund tax cuts for the rich. Barack Obama, starting in his speech last week at George Washington University, has been making that same argument. And it provides, I think, as Celinda would agree, a common frame for Democrats to agree 
greater extent than we saw in 2010. I think the Ryan budget provides a way for a kind of message continuity from the top down for Democrats in 2012 that will be much greater than anything we saw from them in 2010. Because for whatever disagreements among Democrats, the idea of converting, ending the defined benefit character of Medicare and converting it into a premium supporter voucher system is something that is uniformly opposed by Democrats and is a big uphill sell with the public. Uh, and Ron, let me stay with you for a second. So how uh, you know, much time do we have before Paul Ryan winds up under a political bus? Because, I mean, when you well, see they, they Bachman running it. away, that's, that's bad news. Look, I mean, in, in some ways, the die is already cast. That well, what's striking to me is in talking to people in the White House and kind of senior strategists in the Republican Party, they believe the events of the last two weeks have done a lot to lock in already the major components of the issue debate for 2012 uh, in the sense that all but four House Republicans cast a vote for the Ryan budget in full knowledge that it was dead on arrival in the Senate. They've already cast this vote. What's striking, every House Republican in a district won by President Obama in 2008 who voted, voted for this budget. All but one of the House Republicans who won with less than 55 percent of the vote voted for this budget. All but three of the House Republicans in districts with an above average share of seniors voted for this budget. I mean, whatever else they want to do over the next two years, they have already put down this marker. Now, look, it, it's, you know, they have some assets in this debate. The public is concerned about the deficit. They're concerned about spending. And white seniors, as Celinda will tell you, have been moving very sharply toward Republicans. But as I said, the polling on ending the defined benefit character of Medicare and turning it into a voucher that essentially leaves you buying insurance from private companies is a very uphill sell. And there are some Democrats who believe that alone could put the House back in play. All right. Now, Celinda, it seems to me that the only people that could rescue the Republicans here are the Democrats. And they're usually pretty good at that. So as a pollster, would you... Uh, advise them whatever you do do not agree with the republicans on this <laughs> i would indeed but i don't think that's much of a sell and we have the All perfect right. trifecta here we have the tax breaks for the wealthy no one can imagine that we have the subsidies for the oil companies and you just heard in your previous story they're making out like bandits and pirates and then we have taking away your medicare and turning you over to the insurance companies we don't need to say anything else we but, shouldn't be running on anything else uh, no celinda i think you're 100 percent right but the, here's the issue right of course they're not going to the democrats aren't going to say oh yeah let's do a voucher program <laughs> no come on that's beyond all bounds of reason right but do they muddy the issue if they go okay let's agree with the republicans to cut medicare which is the current you know based on washington reporting the current plan doesn't that muddy it it does muddy it, and we saw the same kind of thing with Social Security. And what you saw is Democrats realizing, hey, uh, we need to just stand firm here, support these policies. A majority of voters even support tax increases of their own taxes to help Medicare out. So we should not be going in that direction. We should say, uh, we are not going to turn you over to your insurance company. We are not going to cut Social Security, which is also on the Republican table, and uh, we are going to make the wealthy who haven't been paying their fair share and then we've been bonusing themselves at our expense it's about time they paid their own share of taxes but ron you know we see dick durbin mark warner two democratic senators coming out talking about how they have to quote unquote reform social security which means cut social security they're in the gang of six we see what you know conventional wisdom we see reporting right. out of the white house saying well of course we have to cut Medicare." why is that of course isn't that crazy talk what? Well, look, I'm, no, I'm not here to give advice to Democrats or Republicans, but I can say I don't think from either a political or substantive point of view, it is as simple as saying you draw the line against any changes in those programs. I disagree with you on that. From a substantive point of view, Democrats face the risk that you have over 60 percent of the federal budget is now payments to individuals. And ultimately, if these continue to grow at the rate they're growing, they squeeze out everything else that Democrats believe is important to do, particularly investing in children. If all of the federal budget is going toward entitlements for seniors, you really uh, are sliding the next generation. Politically, the complication is the Democrats are increasingly a party of suburban, upper middle class white voters who are deficit sensitive. I mean, they are they're a party of the young, of minorities, and of college educated whites, particularly women. And to simply ignore the deficit is, I think, risky when you look no, at no, no, who no, their no, voters but, are. And what this is very about. important. This is very important. And I want to ask Linda about this finally. Because nobody's saying ignore the deficit. We're saying there's a different path, the path that the American people are totally on board for raise taxes on the rich. If you just got rid of the Bush tax cuts, it, that's a huge part of it, huge part of it. So, Celinda, you know, 
I saw at the very end of uh, President Obama's speech, he threw in a line about how if we reform taxes, we could actually lower them. And I was like, no, right. no, no, don't do that. <laughs> no, listen to the American people. <laughs> so is there a chance that the Democrats will make that uh, mistake? I think there is a chance that we will be all too policy oriented and too much in the weeds. And let's take Social Security for a second. If all we did was do away with the cap, which the average American doesn't even know exists, because only 6% of Americans make more than $106,000, hey, you don't have to pay Social Security taxes over $106,000. Majority of Americans don't even know that's true. If we took that cap off, we would have the program solvent for decades. So there are things that we can do. We're not drawing the line and saying no yes, changes. That's but there right. are good changes and there are bad changes. And let's not forget, the best way out of this deficit is jobs and to get this economy going again and then making sure that the wealthy are paying their fair share. The rest of us have been paying taxes during this recession. All right. Uh, Ron Brownstein from the National Journal and Democratic pollster Celinda Lake. Great conversation, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.